Welcome back to 2021 Seattle Mariners took a playoff spot right down to the end of the season. What a terrific record in the Pacific Northwest. It was uh, a great year on a lot of fronts 90 and 72 most wins since 2003. They were great in the close games largely because the bullpen that Jerry Depoto and his staff assembled was one of the best in all the baseball. We're going to talk about all this with Seattle Mariner president of baseball ops Jerry DePoto joining us from the GM meetings Jerry thanks for the time man congrats on a really great year for your M's thank you man I, it, what an amazing year so fun to watch and be around and you know unexpected fun right down to the end I, I got to admit um, that I, I was among those that thought you guys were nuts when you made that deal midseason and traded your closer and uh, you were more aware than all of us that you had a more than capable bullpen around just that one arm. Uh, I want to talk to you about I guess the overriding principle you put together such a great group Stecken writer Misevich Sadler was a stud all year. Talk about that group and how you put it together. Uh, and, and there were others you didn't hit on. Uh, but uh, you were one of many who thought we were nuts. And I guess there were moments where we probably thought we were nuts. But you know, we tried to focus on doing the right thing for the present and long term of the Mariners. And you know, Abraham Toro really fit what we were doing. And we did have a ton of confidence in the group that was developing in our pen. And you know, we, we talk about Paul Seawald and Drew Steckenrider. We did pick up Joe Smith in the deal with Houston, who was terrific for us down the stretch and, and did a great job of bringing Bringing that veteran presence but we really leaned on that group and and we probably had a starting rotation that through much of the year was unheralded uh, and at various points we had a hot pitcher who you know sometimes as in the second half it was Marco Gonzalez in the first half you say Kikuchi and throughout the season the stability of Chris Flexen so although our numbers didn't rank with the, the top of the league in overall pitching I do think that our pitching was a stabilizing force for us throughout most of the year. Hey Jerry, it's Harold. Good morning. Now, you t talk about What's talk, up, Harold? Talk about You're another one who thought we were crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. No <laughs> doubt about it. But talk about even crazier. All right. Last time we spoke, really uh, in depth, was at Cooperstown. We got a chance to spend some time with dinner with him and his wife. We hung out. And here's a crazy nutty thing. Tell them about the Malik Smith dinner. He cooked Malik Smith dinner. Tell them the story. It was amazing. Yeah. I love Malik. It's it's odd. We acquired Malik standing right on this lawn in Carlsbad, in front of this uh, the breakfast area here at the the resort. Yeah, wonderful guy, incredibly engaging, a lot of fun. And and the day that we were, were wrapping up his contract for 2019, uh, he asked me what I was doing. I said, I, actually, I'm at home cooking a steak. And, and you know, he asked me to send him a picture. Picture. So I sent him a picture of the steak, and I said, <laughs> let me know anytime. I'll make it for you. And he came in for the, the preseason press conference, and, uh, and I, he said, when are we doing that steak? So he came over, and we, we invited <laughs> all the players, their wives, and, and the next thing you know, we got about 40 people at the house, and, and I'm, I'm in the backyard with a, with a hat turned backwards grilling for the whole group. And, <laughs> and then Malik told me he wanted the steak well done, and I thought, I, there's, there's only so much I can do for you, man. There's only so much I can do. That's excellent. Oh, hey, I, I, I want to ask it. you That's about one of my favorite stories. I, I got a lot to ask you about, because you guys were so fascinating to watch this year before we get to the young nucleus of outfielders and I do want to hit on that I want to ask you about one particular player Chris Flexen turned into a really great story for you guys he did not have anything resembling success in his time with the Mets goes to Korea he's good over there why were you guys confident that that success in Korea could translate back into the states where he had previously struggled. You know, at first with Flex, the, what he did in Korea was just remade his arsenal and he remade his body. You know, I think when Chris was here with the Mets in his first go uh, as a minor leaguer and moving up and down in the big leagues, you know, he was probably weighing in 250, 260. He went over to Korea and knocked his, his weight down to 220, 225, really leaned out and started working on changing the way his pitch action worked. And and one of the, the benefits of the, the COVID summer in 2020 was that the KBO started well before we did. So from a video scouting perspective, we just locked in 
in on what their players were doing. And Chris got off to an unbelievable start. And you know, I heard from his agent, Tom O'Connell, at the end of the year that he was interested in coming back. And you know, we saw an immediate fit as bringing him in and giving him an opportunity to win a rotation spot. And he took it and ran with it, to be fair. And you know, four pitches, he throws a ton of strikes. He competes every night out there. And it was one of the actually one of the top quality start pitchers in all of baseball this year, which I think flies under the radar. Let well, me ask you about the young uh, outfield. Can I hop in any eventually? I, I got, I got okay, a lot to ask Jerry right, about. The Mariners you. were more interesting than about 29 other teams. Seriously, this year. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I, no. I'm just messing with you. Go ahead. Well, I, I want to I ask you about the young outfield group, about Kelnick, Lewis, what you got cooking there. Are we finally at a point, Jerry, where – uh, you know, the caravan in and out the door in Seattle can stop and you've got a group that we might settle on for the long haul here. Yeah, you know, we've been pretty stable these last few years. And, you know, I, I've talked about this before. My time here in Seattle has almost been split in, in two separate jobs. You know, there was the job from 2016 to 18 where we were supporting a veteran core and trying to acquire those role players that would take us, you know, to, to the postseason. We didn't quite get there. And then we started this rebuild in 2019. And since that time, which was, I guess, preempted by a number of trades because that's how you start rebuilds, we've been pretty stable. It's the same core group. Those young outfielders you talked about, in addition to Mitch Hanniger, who's been here throughout, we acquired him back in the winter of 16. Some young prospects we have, you know, most notably Julio Rodriguez, who's, who we think is among the best in baseball and on the doorstep. We, we feel like that group is going to comprise our outfield for the, for the years to come. And, you know, with Hanny coming off what I think was a remarkable bounce back season after a couple of years with injuries. And Kelnick, who I think got better every month of his big league time this year and in September was one of our best hitters all month long and, and showed the power. Julio, who's a five-tool stud who can do a lot of things. And Kyle Lewis, who was the 2020 Rookie of the Year. And, and frankly, we didn't get to see him much last year. And that we were able to, to pull off 90 wins without what perhaps was our most talented player going into the season. So uh, really confident that that group will flourish. I don't know their timeline. You know, as we found out, developing young players in the big leagues is not always linear, but we think the talent is there for this group to be really special. Yeah, I, I thought one of your best moves of the year was sending Kelnick down and then bringing him back up, just letting him get his, his feet back, uh, slow down a little bit and get himself back together. That's just a comment. But my question, uh, J.P. Crawford, when you, when you got J.P. from the Phillies, what did you see? Because he's really blossomed into a big-time player now. You know, with JP, he's a former 16th overall pick in the draft out of high school who was at, for most of his minor league existence, was a top 20, 25 prospect in baseball and, and always had the tools to be a good everyday player in the big leagues and, and especially the defensive tools. He, he's got great skills as a shortstop, hands, feet, arm. He can make the athletic play. And we saw patience in the batter's box. And, and that proved out through his minor league, I, I guess, performance. And when we acquired him, he was still just 24 years old so having the the ability to to put a 24 year old in the middle of our field and give him the opportunity and, and watch him grow and like I spoke about with our outfielders you know his, his development at the big league level wasn't exactly linear uh, but over these last three years he's really caught his traction and he's gotten a little better offensively every year this year we saw a much more consistent on base threat we saw him start to introduce some power and we think the gold glove defender who's got a real emotional catalysts way about him and gets our not just our clubhouse going but he gets our community going I, I don't know if there's another player presently with the Mariners who is who has uh, engaged or, or uh, interacted with the, the Seattle community as much as JP has in a positive way well you know one of the one of the negative stories obviously was the departure maybe of Seeger and what people have been saying and I know you more as a guy that's got the hat flipped backward cooking steaks so I want you to have an opportunity to kind of explain this to people that the narrative may not be so the way it's being uh, portrayed out there. No, you know, it's a, it's unfortunate that it has been portrayed the way it has. Kyle was a great player here for 10 years. And sometimes the best thing you can do is just everybody find a little bit of fresh air. But, you know, we have had conversation and or discussion in the last four years. We were communicating before the season began as to what this might look like. And I did reach out to him to let him know what we were doing. But it, 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 you have to be able to, to connect. And, and I respect the fact that Kyle was emotional about his departure from Seattle. He's one of the 
the great players in the history of the organization. And I want to be respectful of that. You know, it's a, it's very hard to leave some place that you've been for a long time, and it's very hard to, to manage that emotion. It is for for us too. And you know, that's not a steak cooking moment. That's a moment where where you just allow a player to vent whatever he's feeling in a moment. And and I I, I respect the fact that it happened, and now we can move past it. And and hopefully Kyle has a great career wherever he lands next, as he did here. Yeah, you guys gave him a great send off that night too. He got a chance to take him out of the ball game and really receive that reception. Hey, last thing before we let you go, Jerry. So now, as we head to the winter, we're in the winter now. What's the next steps for the Mariners? What do you what do you, what, what do you think you need to, the next thing you need to fill in? We want to add some impact, you know, make that lineup longer. While we showed promise with a lot of our players, we, we saw huge progress from Ty France. We talked about JP and Mitch Haniger, saw the steady progress of Jared Kelnick. You know, now we need to add some impact to that lineup and get longer. Uh, we feel like there's an opportunity to do that with an infield bat and what is a historically good infield free agent class. And, you know, but we want to make sure that, that JP is, is confident uh, as our shortstop. We also want to see if we can just make the back half of our lineup a little bit longer and that may come in the form of some type of, of roll bat or even adding to our outfield to, to join Kalu and, and Kelnick and Hanniger in the early going and that may that may be in the in the form of trade it may be in the form of the free agent market and we do need two starting pitchers you know we we lost Kikuchi who was providing you know high volume innings for us these last three years and again that, that could be market it could be trade but we had one opening now we have two so two starters, a bat for the infield, and, and somebody to give us some balance at, toward the back end of our lineup. That's so exciting. not a short shopping Yeah, list. man. All exciting in, all in on the added, M's. Man. That's awesome. By the way, only the Dodgers and Astros had a better record against winning teams. Yeah. No. The Seattle Mariners, man. Congrats, Great year, Jerry. Jerry. Man, Way to go. Me... Thanks for the time. Hope to see you at the winter meetings. Thanks, guys. All right.